This intro is incredible. The animation is wonderful. And I could only hope to see more from a Sonic animated series down the line. Oh boy. My name is Brian Saviano Brick. So Brian, welcome. Sonic Origins is basically a culmination of all the different Sonic games, the classic ones, uh, one, two, three, and Sonic CD all in one package. I'm playing this on PlayStation 5. And I just kind of want to watch a full show like this. This is really cool. So I, I got this on PS5, not on Switch, because, man, I don't use my PS5 enough. And I figured playing it on this would be good. So hopefully there's no bugs, as I've heard that there are in this game. We shall see. I'm also not a, a, good, a good player of Sonic games, especially in 2D. So we'll see how well all this goes. Thank you for joining me for, I guess, uh, as far as I can get in the game, man. I don't really know. But we'll see how things shake out here. That's a 3D version of Sonic Island. Oh, boy. So we have anniversary mode, classic mode, boss rush. I'm just going to go into anniversary mode and see how it is. Giving you a tutorial right out of the gate here in case you don't know how to play Sonic. Um, you, as a player playing the game, may have never actually um, played a classic Sonic game before because they don't come out with many of them. The last one was really Sonic Mania, which was actually a game developed by a bunch of developers that were fans of the game that were hired by Sega to make the thing. And I'm pretty sure it's a similar situation here. So that's interesting. Basically, you are Sonic and you're freeing these little itty bitty animals from the clutches of Dr. Robotnik, also known as Eggman, as you may know from the Sonic movies. So essentially, this cutscene right here explains more of the game than the game ever did itself. Sing -a. Uh, if you are an older player of Sonic from back in the day, this is all very nostalgic for you and very, uh, very cool. They've released Sonic, obviously, a bunch of times before, but I've never actually played the Sonic games, the classic ones. So first time for me, hopefully you, uh, you can, you can do well with this. So this, this obviously looks just like the Lego set that has come out relatively recently. I actually have it right on my shelf behind me here. Okay. So already doing great. Nice. So basically the way Sonic works, he goes very, very fast and you need to keep track of all that. Uh, not only that, but also if you get hit by an enemy, all your rings go away. And then if you die without any rings or if you get hit without any rings, then you're really in trouble. So the goal is basically get as many coins, coins, as many rings as possible as you go through each of the levels. There are multiple ways to complete the levels, as you can maybe see here. But yeah, so long as you have one ring, you're basically uh, good to go. So again, as I've shown you literally in the first three minutes of me playing this game, I am not any good at it, but that's okay. Uh, you can also do, yep, you can hold it down, launch yourself forward a little bit. Basically, all Sonic is about is uh, momentum, which I have zero of, especially in Sonic. And you can just see how fast it's actually going. So, you know, this is how the game is played, man. You just got to keep track of where things are and take it from there. Um, like I said, oh, there we go. Did I miss that ring? Can I get the ring? No. That looked like a giant ring I could get, so whoops. As you could uh, assume from the, the way that Sonic games have come out, a lot of you probably haven't played, like, classic Sonic because they've done, you know, Sonic movies. They've done Sonic uh, TV shows. They've done a lot of different Sonic things, but not a lot of classic Sonic games, you know? We have Sonic Frontiers. We got Sonic Minecraft, but not like classic, actual classic Sonic. So this might be a first time experience for a lot of you. And you're noticing just how awful I am at 2D, really 2D games in general, man. I guess my, uh, my brain just kind of resonates with the 3D stuff more so. And that's the first death of the game right there. That's great. So you may notice in this version of the game, there are no lives. You can see that as in the other Sonic games, there's other lives you can have, right? I need to actually learn the, learn the controls here. Okay, so it's circle on PlayStation to go forward like that. Gotcha. As you can see, there's no lives, which basically takes the Super Mario Odyssey method, which is also the method of like, hey, we don't actually need to do lives in this game because it's kind of pointless. And basically, back in the day, when you played arcade games, they basically made you have a bunch of quarters to play a video game. That was just kind of how it was. I need to, like, figure out what to do here. 
Okay, so this, this. Okay, so that's how I launch myself forward like that, okay? So down and then launch like that. Okay, there we go. I just wanted to go over here and get these things. Hold on. Da nope. Hold on. Down. Go. There we go. Just like that. Like, they have it so, you know, you speed forward using this and continue your momentum all the way through. But clearly, yeah, I don't have a good grasp on it. And they have it this way because basically, yeah, having a bunch of quarters to play a game obviously makes sense back in the 80s and 90s because, you know, that's how you play video games at the arcade. But now that you're playing on a home console, they're not going to get more money out of you because you already spent money to actually play the game. So having lives just kind of takes you back away from the experience of the game. And it doesn't really make it just doesn't make sense. So that's why, like in Mario Odyssey, they got rid of it and they kind of got rid of it here because, yeah, it just doesn't make sense to have all these lives and then you lose them. You have to restart the level. It's just a little bit too aggravating, especially for younger players who are like, I just want to go, go, go. So there's act two. That's the, the reason for it. You can switch it back to the arcade mode where you're playing with lives and whatnot. And that's fine. You know, you can. Oh, I nearly just bounced off of. Oh, I thought that was a thing that propelled me forward a little bit more. It was not. That's not what it was. And this is why I'm bad at 2D games. My frame of reference for 2D is just not here. So, oh, yep, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't turn into a little ball. This is not Mario logic, Brian. This is this is Sonic logic. OK, this is the fourth time in like a span of 13 seconds that I've managed to die. Hold on. Oh, there's something in the tree. Wait, is that a sympathy? That's a sympathy. I'm going to take the sympathy today. Normally, I wouldn't take the sympathy points, but because I'm so bad at this, yes, I'm just going to go with it. Uh, the other thing Sonic is definitely known for is the music. So you probably heard a lot of this music as um, remixes from other games over the years. Definitely something people love about Sonic. But it is, as you could guess, very fast. And every other 3D Sonic game has kind of struggled to figure out what to do with... Oh, really now? Okay. Give me this. Thank you. I thought... Wait, I'm going faster. The music's going faster. <laughs> don't need to go faster. I need to go at the same speed as before. I can barely handle myself at the previous speed, not this speed. Okay. So you see why... I kind of have a, a tough time with this because you just fling yourself forward and you're going. Oh, there's spikes on there. Oh, yeah, we're going. We're going. There. Now it's a little bit more slowed down. Uh, like, again, I'm used to the 3D Sonic games that technically take it a little bit slower. So that's, that's my experience with the franchise in general. And I think you can actually go over 100 rings. Not coins. Rings. So you can do that. So don't... Oh, or not. Just kidding. Just kidding. Not gonna bother. Yup. Okay. Unlike in Mario, you lose all of your rings every time you die. So keep that in mind. I'm just gonna... I was gonna say, I'm just gonna go forward. Nope. Don't launch me backwards. Because that's gonna be into enemy territory. I don't want to do that. Thank you. Nope. Go, 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 go. Thank you. As long as you have one, you're good. And again, if I were actually a professional gamer, I would have my act together a little bit more, literally, because they're called acts in this game instead of levels, which is great. I didn't mean to launch on top of that one right there. Thank you. So, like I've said, my experience with Sonic is minimal. 3D is more my jam, but that's fine. Uh, a lot of people have had a lot of good things to say about this game specifically, and I figured since Sonic is never uh, really my jam, why not try this, you know? Keep things spicy. This is going to be the Eggman boss battle, I can tell, because there's only three acts per level, just about, right? Yeah, there we go. Hi, Eggman. Eggy, Eggy, come over here. Okay, so you're supposed to jump on top of him just like this, and basically just do that a bunch of times. Uh, there's no homing attack, so keep that in mind. You're not going to be in the... Oh, yep. Okay, so I can see how this can be difficult now. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes, there we go. All right, so I have to simultaneously avoid the ball and avoid Eggman in general, all right? How many lives does he have? I don't even know, actually. Okay. 
Okay, so that's a safe spot in the corner over there. For everyone else watching this, it's like over the age of like basically me. They're like, this is literally the easiest boss battle you could ever have in the game, Brian. What are we doing? But I got him. Hey, Eggies. Eggy, Eggy, you're out and the animals are freed. They did a, a good thing in Sonic Adventure 2 with the animals. They basically had them as uh, not food, but they were kind of food for the chow and the chow garden. I always thought the idea of Sonic freeing animals was a little, uh, interesting. Marble Zone? I thought it was Chemical Plant Zone was number two. Is this new? Actually, I, I would not be able to tell what is new or what is not new. I'm pretty sure this is new. I have never heard of the Marble Zone ever. <laughs> like, this isn't, this isn't the marble, like, the playing of the marble game, right? Where you're racing virtual marbles against each other. I feel like that's not what this is here. Although it could be in a weird way. How do I get up there? Oh, I got to use momentum, right? Yeah, there's no way for me to get up there otherwise. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, interesting. Go. Okay. How do I get up there? Oh, I go down here. Oh, I didn't know because I'm not used to the 2D graphics having different depths of field. Oh. So anyways, that's been uh, basically my experience so far with this. Ooh, this is definitely new. This is 100% new because otherwise this would not be in, a, in an original Sonic game at all. Oh, I got to move this actually. Can I move this? Yeah, I can't. Oh, look at this. See, this is called puzzles, everybody. That's how you solve a puzzle. You just push the block and you're good to go. You can stand on top of the spikes, but you can't actually, like, step on top of them. Which is kind of contradictory, but you get the idea. And of course they're going to drop down. This is definitely a new course. They have never had Marble Zone before. Definitely not. I don't know much about Sonic, but I know that. So, yeah, I've been playing uh, this game in the past couple of days. I feel like this is going to drop back down. Yes, it is. Thank you. I've been playing this. And uh, not really much else, man. I've been doing a lot of travel to a lot of different places across the country because of conventions and other events. Wow. I thought I could slip and slide my way through there. Probably if I lowered myself a little bit, I would have been okay. But even the shield can't block me on, uh, on that one. So that's good. But I've been doing a lot of traveling. I'm going to continue to do a lot of travel this summer. I feel like a lot of people are doing that too, you know. It's the first year in quite a few years where we can kind of be outside and do things a little bit more comfortably than ever before. You know, a lot of that trust is starting to pop back in, taking vacations, doing all sorts of stuff. And uh, I wholeheartedly agree with that sentiment, you know. So if you're watching this right now, definitely go outside as much as I want you to watch my videos constantly. Oh, thank you. As much as I want you to watch my videos all the time. Get outside. Go touch some grass. Go uh, go play pickleball on the pickleball field. You know, whatever it is that you want to do with your life, go and live it. Go and do it. Because we've had quite a, quite a bit of time where we couldn't have. So that's what I've been doing. I went to Orlando. I went to Chicago. And I'm going to Amsterdam for a convention. So three conventions in the course of like a month-long period full of all sorts of nonsense all along the way uh good and bad nonsense with delayed flights but then seeing great people at these conventions and all the social awkwardness that goes all along the way i knew i was going to run into that fireball it's just the bane of my existence it's fine as long as i have a couple rings i'm going to be good thank you there we go oh that's bad that's definitely bad i should have definitely pushed that square down over there all right there we go I'll take this thank you they're definitely being generous with the shielding and I'm all here for it normally I wouldn't take the sympathy but this time I definitely will I'm just gonna slide on down through here and it's gonna be one of these Ooh, so they're really pushing the um, the mechanic of pushing things in general good interesting so yes uh, one of the trips I'm gonna be taking is to Amsterdam for a convention it's called TwitchCon which is basically all about the the live platform in which you play video games you you chat you do things 
going with a buddy of mine named Nick, who is a contestant on Lego Masters Season 3. And the only reason I keep saying that fact, like, I feel like some people are going to get sick of me saying that. They're going to be like, Brian, you keep showing off that you know a, a, a friend of yours is on the show. And it's not really that. It's just because some people might not know exactly who that is, but you will know who that is because national television. So that's basically where that idea comes from. It's not like, oh, let me show off my e-clout. I know a famous person. Like, I mean, I do. But I mean, I'm also famous in my own right, of course. So that's why I say that thing as I say it. So I'll be going there. Basically, what we're doing is building a super scale version of the logo for the website out of Lego. You might be like, Brian, that sounds kind of lame. They, they're they supporting you guys going out there and doing that? Yup, they're paying the whole way through and it's it's great. So, you know, sometimes these opportunities in life, they're a little a little unfounded. You may think they're a little unfounded, but they're definitely founded. You gotta, you gotta shoot that shot and you gotta go for it, man. You gotta meow that, meow that out. That's exactly what I'll be doing in Amsterdam. Not a place I really ever had an innate desire to go to, but I also have no innate desire to travel anywhere, if I'm being totally honest with you. Not really a travel guy, but you know, all these conventions that happen, all these things that happen. Ooh, there we go. Popping back down toward this way. All the things that happen, man, they all they all happen not at home. So you kind of have to kind of have to go away to places and experience all the things as they are, you know? I feel like I can walk on lava. Who said you can't walk on water? You can definitely walk on lava. That's for sure. Excuse me. I'm just going to mosey my way on through here. Managed to get that little caterpillar right at the very tippity top there. Beautiful. So that's what I've had to do in this past time that I've been, you know, going to... Con oh, you cheapo. No, you cheapo. Really? Right when the invincibility stops... Of course, that's when they're like, not nah, you're cut off. You're done. I didn't mean to go over this way. No. Thank you. Give me that little bit of rings over here. Yes. No. Momentum is not my friend. Here we go. This is the way I want to go. Thank you. I'll just keep I'll just keep rolling with it, you know? In spite of all the, the things I'm doing wrong, I'll keep moving. Which is actually kind of the metaphor for life, you know? Keep keep moving. Even if you think you're doing something wrong, just keep keep on going, man. So I've, I've needed to remind myself that of that, actually. Because everyone's like, oh Brian, you're going to you're going to Amsterdam. That's such a such a fun trip. You've made it. It's so cool. It's like, I'm been I don't need it, not really, you know? It's just not uh it's it's a great opportunity. It's a great, fantastic opportunity. But it's not like a oh my goodness. Everything is all perfect and fine, and, you know, I don't feel any differently, you know, before than I do right now. You know, that's kind of... Can I get this guy? Yeah, I can. I just got to get right on right on the head. Right on the, the tippity-top of the skeleton of, the, of the, the caterpillar. That's how I get to where I need to go. Beautiful. So, yeah, it's not... Like, you might be like, oh, it's such a... You know, like, only a super important person or famous... Per like, like, some of that... But that's, like, not it at all. And I'll tell you how that basically all came together. Nick was away recording Lego Masters. And I was talking to him. And he's like, hey, we should do this thing for the convention. So I'm like, all right, I'll pay for No, I'll pay for it. I will fill out all the information to submit to them that basically says, hey, we really want to do this thing at this convention. You know, it's going to cost this amount, this amount of money to make this thing happen. And Nick had actually already done something like that before for them at TwitchCon San Diego, which certainly helped the case. They kind of knew what was going to happen. So it wasn't like a bunch of randos that were doing it. So that was pretty convenient. And, and you know, applied for it, made the thing happen. Is that... Okay, so it, all, it always stays there. Good. So... I filled out the information. They had like a whole panel section where you could apply for panels and host your own, which I applied for it under that, which it's definitely not a panel. It's like going to be a whole thing on the convention floor itself where we're going to be building the logo. It's not going to be held in a panel room or anything like that. It'll be exactly where I think Artist Alley is, which is really cool because artists are fantastic and building Lego is obviously a creative thing. So it's like artsy in its own way. 
That kind of is fitting. Or if it's on the main convention floor, that's fine too. So, applied for that, and conveniently enough, the, the woman who basically approves all of the content for the show, whether it's a panel or, you know, a guest appearance or what we're doing, that person really likes Lego. So to do something creatively unique for a convention that has a lot of video game stuff with somebody who has done it before and knows that it's going to be basically a good thing that happens, right? That they, they know for a fact that Nick can do it and they trust Nick to bring on whoever to make the thing the best thing it can be, right? Okay, great. So, so that basically was a winning formula for them to uh, approve the thing, which is really, really cool. So it wasn't like me who had the idea to do it and like made it happen. It was, it was Nick who said, hey, we should do this. And because of the work that he put in sometime before then, it all, it all basically came together. And it was really cool. So that's why I don't feel like, oh, you know, this is such a cool thing for you, Brian. It's like, uh, not really. Not really. It's because Nick had all these great opportunities beforehand. I got crushed by a cylinder. That's the fourth time this week. And he put in that work. And then, you know, he's like, hey, I want you to be part of this thing. I want you to do this thing with me. I'm like, all right, absolutely. So the way that the, the convention is going to work, it, I, I have to do stuff from Friday to Thursday. Sunday, basically, fly out at different times, though, because not only do I have to prepare for, like, jet lag, which is when, you know, you travel overseas, and then there's... I'm gonna fail right here. No, I'm not. Just kidding. I can persevere. I'm good to go. Jet lag is what happens when you travel overseas, and your body doesn't adjust to the different time zones. So I have to factor in a little bit of time for jet lag, which is about a day. Oh, some sort of sound happened. I don't know what that was, but sure. So factor in time for jet lag. And then also they let us book the, the, the whole arrangement like a couple days before the show even starts. So basically I have some time to basically do whatever I want, which is kind of cool. So I have to go this way, right? I think I do. Okay, cool. I definitely have to. Yes, good. I'm avoiding that caterpillar. You're way too risky. Not going to deal with that. So the flight goes out on Tuesday, which is the 11th of July, and then I return on the 20th of July. But basically, I will, I'll be out of commission on the 20, 20th and the 21st because I'll be going from Amsterdam back here, all the time zones. So when I go there, I will leave at 7, 7 p.m. at night, obviously, Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. And then when I get there, it'll be 7 o'clock in the morning. So nice. So basically, I will have slept the night, even though I'm taking a flight over to, to Amsterdam. So I'm going to be so oh, geez, what happened here? Whoa. All right. Okay. That's not what I wanted at all. Oh, I'm actually a pretty far ways back. I'll skip to when I'm a little bit more forward. Okay, so I think I'm where I was before. So I will basically lose a day of sleep because I'm traveling. So I have to have a little bit of time before and afterward to adjust to the time zone that I'm in, which is a much bigger pain in the butt than you might think. Oh boy, eggy eggies. Here we go. Is that only one platform that I have to get him at? No, just kidding. I can do this right here. Good. Oh, oh, okay. That's interesting. And I got to go over here, right? Yep, basically do this. No, I'm done. Right here. Yeah, because I can't I can't survive. Right there. Interesting. Yeah, I mmm. Wow. That's very interesting. Okay. Luckily it, it kicks me right back over here. It doesn't dro drive me way past the point of no return, which is good. But I basically Oh yeah, that's this is tough, especially with no rings. So I can't get hit once, basically, unless. Are there some rings over here I can snag? I mean, it shows I have one coin. I was going to say, there must be some... No. No. Give me the ring. One ring. No, you cracker... I'm just going to do that. I need to have some rings to have at least... I can't get hit one time, right? I have to have something. If I go over here, there we go. Can I please not get hit by these? Really? Seriously? Okay. Momentum again. 
Not my friend. Can I do it on one life? Or two lives, basically? We shall see. Go. Keep on moving. All right. So, there we go. I'm going to wait for him to get back over here. And all I need to do is just hit him once or twice. Once or twice. And then there we go. Back over here. Right. It's just all about momentum in that sense. Back over here. Good. One. Oh, that was super quick. Oh. Well, that worked out. That's really good. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that was not much of a pain in the butt as I thought it was. Stellar. Well, there's that. There's Marble Zone and Green Hill Zone. So Sonic has passed Act 3. So level 2, Act 3, pretty much. That's pretty spicy. So I'll continue. I guess this is Sonic 1 or Sonic... I don't, I don't know what actually this game is. Spring Yard Zone Act 1. There we go. This is more familiar. I'll continue this in the next episode, though. Bye.